of concern are they seriously about the reason? They are not actually, you know, they don't bother much about the reason. And uh, there are a few incidents in my life that actually, you know, paved way for me uh, learning about Islam. Uh, one of them was uh, my grandpa's death. Death is something which makes everybody think. Uh, you know, if somebody has, uh, who's here and has lost a loved one, he knows that how it feels when he loses a loved one. He knows that this person who has passed away is not going to be back. He's not going to, you know, you're not, not going to be him. So when my grandpa passed away, I actually started thinking about life. I was quite young at that time. So I used to think that uh, if uh, life is all about dying, then why am I here? And I, I was quite close to my mom. I, I couldn't, uh, you know, uh, or digest the fact that one day I'm going to lose my parents, I'm going to lose my friends, and we're all going to die and come to an end. So this, I used to think about this. I was quite young and uh, for a month, for a for month, I didn't get sleep, so finally I think my mom, uh, she took me to the doctor and death is something you know, with time people forget. So I knew when the life carried on. But uh, that had a big impact on me. Uh, you know, it gave me reasons to think, what is the purpose of life? This is something that I started thinking about. So at that point of time, I thought, you know, I was born in a Hindu, Hindu family, so I think Hinduism is a truth, so let me look into it. So I started getting, you know, becoming a good religious, you you can say. I started going to the temples. And in South India, you may be able to, I think I have been there, and I have, uh, 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 you know, covered most of the temples, and then I started uh, reading the mantras that they have, and doing so many stuff, and started questioning people. It took, like, you know, uh, maybe a couple of years I started doing this. And then finally, one finally I sit and I realize that subhanAllah, who was I worshipping so far? Because I see a portrait of a God in front of me and there is dust on top of it. And I realize that this God whom I have been asking so far has not been able to remove the dust that is on top of him. And how is he going to help me? You know, that makes me, that made me think. And uh, that's when I started, you know, looking you know, at the scriptures like how we have the Ramayana and Mahabharata. And after going through all that, I realized I don't want to be worshipping a God who needs the help of an army to defeat his enemies, who needs the help of monkeys to rescue his wife. I don't want to be worshipping a God who steals from his neighbor. I don't want to be worshipping a God who cannot uh, recognize who is his son. I don't want to be worshipping a God who cannot face back the, the head of the son which he himself cut. I don't want to be worshipping a God who has a wife, who, I don't want to be worshipping a God who looks like human, who, who needs family. Because if God is in need, then God, He is not God. If God is not perfect, then He is not God. And if God is like me, then He is not God. This is something that every person actually knows, but doesn't want to accept the fact. So, however, my question was unanswered at that time. So, I thought, you know, uh, let me look into something else. So, uh, there was this thing called uh, Brahma Kumaris, you know, they wear the white sari and they say that God is one. So, I was quite attracted to this concept of God being one, you know, this is great. So, I joined this and uh, I, I can't get into more details about this. You know. so let me just say, the reason I love it is because finally they told me God is sure. I mean, I love this and keep here and you tell me again God is sure. You told me it's one, now it changed. Then they say, they had the session where the, you know, all the men sit on the floor and the woman, there's a young lady who comes and she stares at the man. And if you ask them why they are doing this, they say positive vibrations pass through this uh, the staring session. I mean, that, that's when I knew I need to get away from here. And that's when I knew why the people around me were here for. And uh, after that, the search continued, the search for truth continued. And uh, I was going to a secular Christian college uh, school, you can say. So, Christians, you can see them being very nice with the best of o'clock and the best of manners and you know they call you for Christmas and they give you cake and you know the teacher all were nice to me. So I thought, you know, they are so good to you. I think this has to be the truth. And so I thought, let me you know, look into it. So I had a Christian friend and he told me to, he gave me a Bible. Now I didn't, uh, I don't want to get into the details of why I came out of it. I think maybe uh, what I was doing is going to explain why Christianity is wrong. So 
Now, for me, it was more about that uh, the moment I open, it says revised revision. And I ask what's revised revision. They say that uh, if you ask if you ask somebody who talks a question, he'll say some of the lines of this Bible were removed. I'm like, if it's from God, why did you remove it? So before you open, you actually close it because if it is from God, it doesn't change. It has to remain the same. And no human intervention can alter it now. And there are many other concepts which actually I don't want to discuss here in this uh, gathering right now. And uh, so now from 3 crore 333 lakhs of gold, I came to 3. And then in college, I thought that you know, I still couldn't find answers to this. So I thought uh, it's, there's no God. So I came to zero. So I concluded that there's no God. Let, let me enjoy, like, you know, they say, it, uh, just do it. Or you can just do it before you die and uh, have the best out of it. And uh, life is all about it. You know, enjoying and doing what you can till you die. After you die, that's it, nothing. Nobody's going to ask about you. You'll be burnt or by you, whatever. So, uh, I, used to, I started doing all the wrong things which I shouldn't do and stuff from that. And um, I started being in the wrong crowd, um, partying, going to risk. Uh, I was working as a part of VJ and then I was hanging out with people, I started visiting my parents, I used to run classes, my attendance was very low and play pool, play out, play me out and uh, hang out with the girls and do all the wrong stuff. And people around me used to think, oh, Ashish is annoying life man, you know, he is happy, he is very happy. I used to show that to the people that you know, I am enjoying. And you know, when you see youngsters who do this kind of lifestyle, they, they show you that they are having the best of it. But deep within even that person and even me, I knew at that point that I was not happy because after doing it all, I sat and I started thinking, okay, now I have done it all, what next? No. What do I do? That's it. So you don't get the real happiness out of all this stuff and you still seek for that. But however, you feel that there is no answer. You can not have yourself. You know, just live life, enjoy, and do your stuff. And uh, now you might ask, uh, you try to have some things, but why not Islam? And this is one question I always love to answer. Uh, few aspects of my one is my dad's friends, like we are members of this uh, anti Muslim group, you can say. So since I was very, very firm that you need to hate Muslims, you need to always get more mass than the Muslims, you need to you know, uh, compete with them in all sorts and do everything with them. So although I had Muslim friends in school, but that deep within I, I used to dislike them, I don't know for what reason. And they used to always say that Muslims are, you know, the Pakistanis, that's it. And that was the concept of Islam and also the media, subhanAllah. The media plays a big role. Uh, if you watch the Bollywood, and don't watch the Bollywood news, but if you have already seen it before, then you'll see. Uh, Islam is either portrayed as a guy with a long beard and a terrorist, or a Muslim girl with just a dupat on her head and she falls in love with a non Muslim guy, or there is this guy who goes in, the, goes in front of the graves, astaghfirullah, or there is this guy who walks around and you know, does the Sufi thing. You know? So this is the way media tries to put it as well. And this is how we all, you know, uh, life is this thing. And we think, okay, this is what it is. And the third most important reason is, um, I mean, I feel sad to say this, but this is the truth, that it's because of Muslims. You see, uh, you, yeah, you actually don't realize the difference. You see Muslims who don't look like Muslims, who don't behave like Muslims. You see them lie, you see them cheat, you see them not praying. I mean, if this is the reason, that is the truth. You should have convinced them. That's why I started thinking at that point of time. And then, uh, during this time, um, I actually met uh, Muslim friends. I had Muslim friends before that, but I met this friend in college and we were quite close and we started hanging around and we started discussing all sorts, you know, stuff like from cars to, you know, sports to cars to, you know, religion and all that. So, one fine day, we spoke about religion, and I was quite curious to know about it. So he tells me, do you know who is Allah? 
And like, you know, most of Muslims, especially my family background, when we think of Muslims, they either worship a wall, which they see the most in front of the wall, or they worship the moon and the star that's on top of the masajid, or you know, they have this, they worship the, the, the dead people, or they have this weird concept of what most Muslims, non Muslims back in India, they don't know what other Muslims do. So, the, the moon he told me, Allah means the true God. I was like, what are you saying? I mean, this can't be true. This, does this mean this? I mean, are you, are you like serious about it? Then he says, yes. And Islam means submitting your will to the one true God. And Muslim means the one who submits his will to the one true God. I was like, I was blown off. But the thing is, you know, in this journey of uh, seeking the truth, there are certain barriers that come. For me, at that point, uh, I wanted to know the truth, but then my biggest barrier at that point was my ego. You know, most non-Muslims who try to look for the truth, it's their ego that puts them back. So at that point of time, the moment he told all these things, I was you know, getting convinced inside that there's something special about it. But my ego, uh, I was going to like, you know, I, I don't care whatever you say, you need to listen to uh, what I say. And this is Hinduism. This is, I was even trying to hear the power of Hinduism. Although they feel in me, I know Hinduism is not the truth. But still, that thing about my culture and my people, I was trying to put it on him. And uh, it wasn't that he was trying to convert me or something. He, we just had this discussion. So the more he started talking about Islam, the more I started you know, thinking about it. Um, then he started talking about the scientific miracles in the Quran, uh, which Brother Ismail already mentioned. Uh, there, there is one thing which, uh, there's a book similar to the brief illustrative guide of understanding Islam. It's similar to that, which he showed me. In that there's a verse, I think Surah uh, Kiyama was 3 to 4, something like that. And it talks about, uh, does man think that he not be respected? Will he be raised back to the tips of his fingers? So this was, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is trying to stress on the point, you know, he's um, not stress or stuff from. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us this, that uh, if man assumes that you won't be respected, will he be bring back to the tips of the fingers? And just for uh, just few hundred years back, we came to know that every person has a different fingertip. Now, this, all these things start making me thinking you know, this guy who is in the desert, no internet, no rule, and he comes up with all these things, it can't be from him. So I started doing my own research because I wasn't a uh, sort of person whom you can come and say, see, this is my reason, this is, these are the nice people, and this is the truth, and this is the book from God. Okay, do this. I wouldn't do that, you know. Why should I? So I started doing my own research. I went back and looked at Hinduism again because I, 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 I was hard for the mindset that Islam was better than Hinduism. I questioned the mindset because you know what brain fills in style that this, these are the right people. How can the right people be the, you know, the, the right people? So I started doing my own research and uh, I looked back into Hinduism again just to confirm the old Christianity and small. The more you do research about other religions, the more you are convinced, uh, the more you are convinced about Islam. This is a challenge for all the non-Muslims. The more you do research about your own religion, the more you will be convinced about Islam if you look into Islam. If you look into Islam through a neutral source. I, I, uh, I mean, I thank Allah that Allah showed me Muslims before He showed me Islam. Because at that point of time, I had realized that Muslims are, Islam is a different thing. For people who look for truth, they get this mixed up. They look at the behavior of the Muslim I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to say all Muslims are bad, you know, so there are a whole lot of good women and all that. But uh, people get this thing mixed up. They look at the Muslims and they try to come to conclusion. No, don't do that. Look into the scriptures, look into what the original source has to say, and that's when you will be convinced about uh, Islam being the truth. So, however, I think uh, it was a good thing to something. I, it took some time for my ego to overcome, but I, you know, still, I didn't tell him that, okay, I'm convinced. I tried to get more into the uh, why about Hinduism, actually, and that's when I realized, I came to the conclusion that if you see the Hindus, uh, the idols or gods that they worship, especially in our place, if you notice, it's more about what they fear or something that brings them benefit, like, let me give you an example. Uh, my family, uh, you know, in, uh, in our place, they, they 
was the top. Uh, we watched this plan called Tulsi. The reason, you see, actually, because it has some benefit. Okay, now if it has a benefit, why does it have 